I mean, he had to put aside his own ego to train with me. You know, he, he, he was skilled and fought, you know, matches in, in Europe. You know, he was an accomplished martial artist. He was not an accomplished kumite fighter. Hey guys, it got a really cool video. Really cool video. So I, I've put out several videos with Frank Dukes interviewing him. This is one of my favorites by far. What I really wanted to know, what I really wanted to ask him. And despite what you think about Frank Dukes and his background, you cannot refute that he did train Jean Claude Van Damme in preparation for Bloodsport. He did choreograph the fights in Bloodsport. So we're going to talk about that stuff. And this is, you got to appreciate what Frank Dukes has done and his contribution to this film. Anyway, if you like this kind of content, please help support the channel by hitting the like button, subscribing, and sharing the video. He's, he was really concerned about his film, and this is his breakout, and he wanted the best possible thing. And I took his suggestions. He had some great suggestions in the, in the choreography of the movie. It was his idea, I'll give him credit for dropping down and hitting the knees, you know? Okay. At the end. That's, that's John Claude's, uh, you know. Oh, that's interesting. That was his you know, idea. ideas. You know, it's a collaborative effort. And the one thing I think John Claude appreciated about me in those days, at least, is I really knew how to bring out of him the best of him. And I knew how to hold, like a, like a racehorse. I knew how to, like, hold him back and then let him loose when, it, when we were just with inside that, that finish line, you know, and win the race. And that's what made him so different than any other martial artist out there. Let me ask you this, Frank. So, you know, like those iconic poses he'll do he'll hit the guy and then he'll make his noises and he'll flex like was that your idea was that like van damme's idea like i'm gonna hit the guy and then i'm gonna like just you know flex and make my cool ass noise that i think that was more van damme okay you know to, to be honest, that's a big part of the choreography of really just yeah. kind of holding that moment right well i was known to do that too i mean he studied me you know sure. when i when i'd spar in, in, in school and when i I did my techniques. And I think that's where he got it from because I would do a technique. And, the, and if you, if you talk to this guy or anybody, I used to, you know, I just jump back there and I just, I'd hold that position or I'd make my guys hold that position. And, uh, and that was, uh, and I think that's where he, he took it from, but it was, as far as being used in the movie, that was, that was, that came from him. Okay. You know, Let, let's, uh, and we're going to dive deeper in that in a second, but, let, let's just rewind a little bit. So you're partially responsible for getting him cast in the movie, aren't you? Oh, man, that was a fight. Yeah, let, let, let's talk about fight. that. They wanted to do, well, can, people at Canon wanted to use Michael Dudikoff because he was, a, they felt they could sell the, they could do pre-sales and they could sell it because he was a known entity. Mm-hmm. He said, well, you know, Frank Dudikoff will get the movie sold and it'll be seen, you know. This guy, it might end up on a shelf. And it did end up on the shelf for two years. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay, it did end up on the shelf for two years. Because he wasn't a star. He wasn't a quality thing. People didn't want to put money behind him in, in the distribution side of the movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but I had to fight with this. I said, look, here's a picture of me. Here's this. The guy can't even speak English, you know, and Mark <laughs> valid arguments. I go, I said, yeah, but I'll make up for it with choreography. You've never seen before, Mark. And that's, what's going to sell your movie. Because yeah, you wouldn't have been able to do that with Dudikoff. He wasn't a martial artist. He can't no like do the helicopter kick or any jump off the guy and do the sidekick or no. anything like that. Yeah, no way. And so he said, okay, let's do that. And, and he, but he says, but one condition, he says, you know, he says, you, you have to agree to, to train this guy and get him to look like you and do the things you say you can get him to do, you know, before we go ahead with the movie and, and we, and we green light it. it wasn't green lit. So I had to take care of Jean-Claude and I had him in my studios for about three months and he would come three times a week. And it was really funny. He'd come in this little black dog, Gladys Portuguese and Michelle Kesey. Okay. And they would come in and I, I used to crack up at them because at the time everybody wore white socks, you know, you were considered a total nerd if you wore dress shoes and black socks in those days. I mean, you were like the, and here comes this guy who's going to be the leading man 
of this movie. If you can imagine this. And I and all my students were looking at him going, because they heard he's going to be the leading man, right? Sure. So his first appearance to them is he's wearing horn rim glasses, a hat that an 80-year-old man would wear, okay, a filthy, filthy polo shirt that's torn. You know, um, we call it plaid shorts, plaid shorts, yeah. okay. And and socks up to almost up to his knees with with brown suede shoes, <laughs> and, I, and everybody just looked at me going, and they they thought I was putting them on for weeks. Yeah, right. He's a leading man, right? Yeah, sure. You know, and then they they would leave, and then I I uh, started my my first lesson with him. I remember I said, okay, do a forward roll, and he 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 did it uh, as a way you do it in ballet. In gymnastics, he tumbled, you know, going over his, you know, the back part of his head, but straight. I said, no, no, a shoulder roll as if you got thrown. Mm. Show me a shoulder. He landed on his head. <laughs> I read that in an interview, by the way. <laughs> yeah. But he was trying to please. I want to make this real clear. He was trying to please. He'd never done a shoulder roll. He'd done plenty of other roles. He was perfectly capable of doing stuff. But it was right. something that was out of his comfort zone. And the guy, and the guy was willing to go for it. That's my point. You know, he can laugh. He can laugh about it. I I think it's it's actually a real testimony to this guy's heart and how much he wanted that role, what he was willing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he had to put aside his own ego to train with me. You know, he 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 was skilled and fought you know matches in in Europe. You know, he was an accomplished martial artist. He was not an accomplished kumite fighter, and that's what I told my attorney and others and unfortunately the way attorneys work the way they draw papers you know oh he's you know people again the, the press spun it frank duke says you know jean claude's a fraud and that he couldn't do this no, i never said that i said he never could do kumite he never was a kumite champion and this was a totally different animal totally different than kickboxing to and how you portrayed it and what we were doing with it Real quick, Frank. So basically for three months, you train with them for three, three days a week. Like how long were the sessions? Oh, we trained till when we were done. Oh, so they could be I like didn't... multiple hours each day. Oh yeah. There was one time I think we trained till like three, four in the morning. I would not let him go till he got it. What was you know, he, what he like? Was... Got what exactly? What techniques or whatever were you trying to get him to do? How to move. It was really how to move. I would teach him how to move, how to sell a punch. I was trained by, by Hubie Kearns. Oh, so you were teaching him like play. fight choreography stuff just right. here, because you were taught was, yourself by like a stuntman. Exactly. Okay. I was, teaching, I was teaching him that, but I was teaching him a whole new approach using the martial arts. You had to cut – in order to do a lot of the moves that we were doing, they were actually very sophisticated in that you have to, you have, to have your body catching the light in a certain way, and you have to have it – catching the angle of the camera another way. So you really have to know how to place, how to manipulate your actions, sometimes while you're moving, almost going in an opposite direction. And he got it. He got it because he had that dance background. Okay. And he had to learn, I made him learn long, complex sets of movements. That's why blood source is unique. You never saw, like with Bruce Lee, he could only do like two or three movements. And then he had to stop the camera and then he was onto another move. Okay. Mm -hmm. With Jean Claude, I could keep him going. And we never did this on film, but I could have kept him going for 20 minutes straight and you would have never had to cut that camera. You know what's interesting? And that's how they shoot films nowadays. And that's how he even shot a sequence in, I think, one of the later Universal Soldier films was just like a long take and he's doing all this knife stuff and they just shoot him the whole time because like a lot of people will say oh you know i i don't agree with this by the way but a lot of people will say oh well you know the van damme uh fight choreography is just simple he's doing like one move and then they they, they cut away and doing all this but you're basically saying he could have just like kept going oh yeah he was never used to his full potential this is one of the reasons i'm so angry with sheldon because he got in the way of me being able to help that man really reach his full potential he could have been the bigger than bruce lee really uh, you know oh, yeah. in some ways he he's like they're on the same level i think in some ways because even bolo young said it like 
you had Bruce Lee, then you had Van Damme. There's no next. Like really, aside from like maybe Stephen Skull, who made it big time in Hollywood too. As far as like a big mainstream A lister martial arts actor, those are really the only guys. If you think about, you have it. to also remember, Seagal started with a big budget. He got yeah, he got, Warner Brothers. He got he, lucky. He had a lot of power behind him. He had a lot of uh, had a huge comfort zone to get things wrong. Okay, and they could redo it. In Bloodsport, sometimes there was only going to be one take. That's it. Oh, we're wow. going we to get a second shot at this. So you better get it right. And we did that. But the, the scene where he's being pulled by the tree, that was for real. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, Is that something you had to do in your training? Like, wh- how would you even yeah. think about you? You literally did that. Yeah, I trained him that way. Got him ready for that. You know, but I did it in another way because I knew what was coming in the movie. He, he, you know, I didn't think he saw that in the script. But then when he did, he 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 loved it. He excelled at it because he does the splits. He does all those things. But then let, I was let like, me ask you this, Frank. Let me ask you this, Frank. So basically, when you were training him for three months mm-hmm. before you guys went to Hong Kong and shot it, did yeah. you already go through all the choreography with him? Like, okay, you're gonna fight this karate guy. You're gonna do these moves, or did no, you just we, come up with them well, when you were in Hong Kong? We, I had to come up with in Hong Kong because I didn't know what I had to work with on the other side talent wise. That, that makes sense. Okay. I, had I known, we could have done it for months. I mean, and I don't think it would have come out as good. I think it would have been too stilted. I think one of the beauties of, 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 of uh, Bloodsport is that it wasn't rehearsed. I mean, the, the guy who had his tooth knocked out, a good example of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I covered that kind of video. I kept telling this actor, this guy, do not lean forward. You're going to get hit. You don't have to be there. I said, we're going to have the camera over there, and his camera is going to go between your face, that space, and it's going to cover it. Even though it's going to be two feet from your face or a foot from your face, you don't. You just react as soon as it crosses that line. I said, just look at the line. No. So look at the line. He's looking at the back of jean Claude's head. <laughs> you understand? And yeah. when he moves, he kind of moves in because jean Claude kind of moves forward. And then he's right in the way of the shot and gets hit. Mm-hmm. Boom. You know, that's it. And he, he claims he was knocked out. He wasn't knocked out. He did chip a tooth and then they reshot the scene again. And then they didn't and then they just basically took him to the to the aid station or whatever to, to get to get it, you know. But basically, uh, uh, um, yeah. as far as Quarkfi goes, and I agree with this, I guess it almost seems better if it's not overly choreographed because then it just looks like too fake whereas you don't kind of have like that element right. where it kind of almost looks like a real fight which Bloodsport had like some of those fights like it kind of did look even though it's a movie there there well, was some realism where the so guy not. doesn't necessarily know 100 percent what the other guy's going to do at least it doesn't look like that on film and that's why it works well that's exactly why it works you, you, you hit it right there and and the other thing about it is when you look at uh, showtime when it came out and did a special on the movie it took actual Kumite fight footage and it actually compared the choreography to the the footage. And of course, you know, the footage is a little rougher, you know, like when a guy's given a crescent kick, the leg is, you know, in real life fully extended, but it's a crescent kick. You can see it knocking the guy out just like you see in the movie. So there's, there's any number of things like that going on. Yeah. And then, going, going back to that three months of training, it was, I, so was it mostly, trying to teach Van Damme how to work with the camera, with the choreography and like how the angles are going to work and all that. Or was there like a lot of, were there like specific martial arts techniques you taught him that he didn't know prior to that training? It's a combination of everything. It wasn't just any one thing. And a lot of it I was doing on my own, not even telling what I was doing. I was, I was, I was getting a beat on, I was, I was getting, I was testing him on, on different things to see how he moved, how, what I could do. Uh, what latitude I had to work with him in the choreography. I mean, th- tricks that uh, Hubie Kearns had taught me, who was a stuntman Hall of Famer. And like I said, he, he he's the guy who taught Bruce Lee everything about the camera. Really? Okay, and, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah. I mean, Hubie was an amazing guy. You know, he really was an amazing guy. I never got much credit. Him and Red Morgan uh, took me aside and trained me in filmmaking. You well, know, how did you, like, when? How did you meet them? Well, uh, I met him through through uh, one of my black belts by the name of, of uh, Stuart Wilson. Stuart oh, that's that dude in Lionheart. The, the kilt dude. 
That's that's my black belt. That's funny. Yeah. In fact, Stewart's probably he, he he was. I could say he was even he was right up there with a guy named Jay Dana for being my first black belt. He's like within the first three. Wow. Okay. And in fact, uh, to show you that I'm not a person like consumed with my ego and worship me kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I actually made Stuart go to Danny and Asanto's school and learn Kali and had, sent him over there and saying, look, the class isn't going to catch up to you. You're way ahead of them. So you need to go over there so you can work with people on your level and then come back. And he did. And Stuart then, you know, built a career from that. Um, his father was the guy, you know, Mr. Whipple, don't squeeze the Charmin. But that was his father. And so he would go to his father, arranged for him to train with, with Hubie, uh, learning stunts. And he brought me over one day. And Hubie says, look, I want to open the Stunt Academy. And I was already at that time the head of training for um, stunt work for the Canadian Stuntmen's Association. Because I had learned it from, from some other people. And, that, and uh, so I was doing that. And so I basically, you know, learned from, from Hubie the majority of my craft and uh, Red Morgan. I, uh, I can't remember the guy's name who I learned before that. I think it was Washburn. Anyways, the, po the point is I, I, I perfected my craft before I ever went into doing blood sword. It wasn't a wing kind of thing. And I had the advantage of using some really, you know, tapping into some of the greatest filmmakers there are that never got credit for what they did at the time because stunt work and stunting and second unit directing wasn't really of high value in those days everybody didn't pay much attention to it certainly not the academy mm -hmm. but you know i put all that all together and i put that poured that into jean claude and really worked with what he could do and what he couldn't do i mean remember when we did lionheart I was setting up a, I was going to set up for him to do a whole grappling thing for that underground bridge fight. Oh, really? Was, yeah. Who wants to take on the lion? Somebody's got to take on the damn lion. We will discuss that in great detail in the next episode. But the cool thing is, aside from Frank Dukes, there's also going to be another special guest in that episode whom we've seen in Lionheart. And you'll recognize him right away.